Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a muck dyed starflower shirt. This is actually going to be a reverse dyed shirt. So I've washed the shirt, but I haven't soaked it in anything. So it's just damp with plain water. I'm going to fold a corner starflower. So in order to do that, I'm taking one corner of the hem of the shirt and folding the hem up where it's flush with the other side of the shirt. Then I'm going to fold the hem of the shirt back halfway. Pinch that seam and lift the shirt up off of the table and turn it over. After I straighten all of my folds, I'm going to make one more fold on each side of the shirt. Now starting down at the very end of the fold, I'm going to begin to spiral the shirt in on top of itself. And I'm trying to keep these folds really tight. Once I have the entire shirt spiraled, I'm going to put a rubber band around the shirt just to hold it in place until I can get it tied. Since I'm going to reverse dye this shirt, I'm going to try to see if I can tie it up with some sinew. Maybe if I tie it tight enough with sinew, not absolutely all of the pink will be removed from the shirt. Okay, for the color removal process, I'm going to use a product called Out White Bright Laundry Whitener. I purchased mine at Walmart in the laundry aisle, but if you can't find any at your local store, I have a link down below in the description for where you can purchase some from Amazon. I'm going to remove the color from a whole lot of shirts all at the same time. So I've placed them inside of a plastic container and I'm doing this entire process outside. The Out White Bright does have a smell, so I don't like to use it inside. And I wear my respirator for this entire process because I don't want to inhale any of the fumes or the powder. I start by liberally sprinkling the Out White Bright over the top of all of the shirts. And then I pour boiling hot water over the top. The minute I pour the boiling hot water over the top, the out white bright begins to foam and remove the color from the shirts. Since I have so many shirts in this container, I came back and added a little bit more out white bright and more boiling hot water so that I could submerge the shirts.
I sped the video up, but I left the shirts in the out white bright for about 10 minutes. It went ahead and started to sprinkle or lightly rain, so I didn't film the entire process. But as soon as I took the shirts out of the out white bright, I took them to my utility sink and I rinsed them in cold water. After rinsing in cold water, I put them in my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent and washed them using a hot water cycle. Then I put the shirt into my soda ash solution and I allowed it to soak. If you remember, I usually put any shirts that have either been previously dyed or that I've done a color removal process into a different soda ash solution because some of the original color from the shirt can come out into the soda ash. Okay, so it looked like all the color got removed from this shirt, so I went ahead and untied it to see what it looked like, and pretty much all the color was removed from the shirt. It doesn't look bad, but I'm, for the most part, starting with a blank slate. It is kind of interesting, though, how this pink shirt ended up being a light yellow color. I like the fact that the stitching stayed pink, though. Obviously, that is some polyester thread. I'm going to fold the shirt the same way that I did to remove the color, so I'm not really going to explain the process. So when you get to this point in the fold, if you'll notice, this side of the shirt that's facing me only has two folds. That's the side that I'm going to begin spiraling the shirt in toward. This time, I'm going to hold the folds in place with some kite string. Even though almost all of the pink was removed from the shirt, there's still just a little bit left. So I'm going to use colors that won't look strange with what little pink is left in the shirt. I'm also going to muck dye the shirt, so I've placed it down inside of a small plastic container. I used a washable marker and divided the shirt into six sections as well. For this shirt, I'm using Fuchsia from Dharma, Lavender Fields from Dye Spin, Sky Blue from Grateful Dyes, Wholesale Pink from Custom Colors, English Violet from Dye Spin, and Peacock Blue from Dharma. I mentioned that I'm going to muck dye this shirt, and if you aren't familiar with that term, all that basically means is that I'm going to allow the shirt to sit in this container in the runoff from the melting ice that mixes with the dye. That runoff is called muck. Okay, so now I'm going to put an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye and then load on the ice. Then I'm going to put the shirt aside and I'm going to allow all the ice to melt. And I'm going to leave the shirt for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. In this case, I went out of town and it sat for about five or six days before I rinsed it out. I put it down inside of another container where I was doing an inclined ice dye, just in case the container happened to leak. I didn't want to come home to a huge mess. I don't really have any issues with the plastic containers leaking, but just in case since I was going to be gone for several days. Then to rinse the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I untied the shirt and warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. 
When the water was running almost clear, I put the shirt, along with some Dharma's textile detergent, into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle. And after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So I like the shirt. I definitely don't think it was worth doing a color removal process on. I just wanted to kind of see if I could tie that sinew tight enough where I could get a design like this to show up, but it didn't work out for me this time. I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and try a few different things to see if I can get that to work. I like the corner star flower though. I think that looks cool. And you know how I'm always saying that for thick designs like this, I like to dye them when they're completely dry. Well, I let this one dry out for about 24 hours, but it obviously was still a little bit damp on the inside because you can see a couple areas where I didn't get great color saturation. I had plenty of muck, but if the inside of the shirt is too damp, it's not going to absorb all of that liquid and color the inside of the shirt. I really like the colors and how they work together. You pretty much can't see any of that original pink that was left on the shirt. You also can't see any of the yellow color that the shirt turned after I used the Out White Bright. It does still have the pink stitching, which kind of makes a fun little detail on the shirt. So overall, I like this shirt. The only thing I would change is allow it to dry out a little bit more and just totally skip the reverse dye process. Just use a white shirt. I really love Out White Bright, but I've got to figure out a way to kind of restrain it a little bit where it doesn't remove absolutely all the color from the shirt. So if you've enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.